things you can do to fight spiritual attacks. Just because we are Christians, it does not stop us from being attacked. Get this clear. The fact that you are Christian doesn't shield you from being attacked by the devil. Attacks are constant, and they will keep coming. They come in different forms and from all directions. When you see something that is affecting you in the physical, be sure to examine it properly with the help of the Holy Spirit to know the spiritual source. Not everything you see in the physical is limited to the physical. They come from the spiritual too. There are attacks that you must know how to stop. You are to fight them. You can't just fight this war without having strategies. You must plan it out. You must know what you are doing. You must be ready to do the right thing. When the attacks come, how do you fight them? Number one, fight back with prayer. There is no way to take away prayer from the list of the ways we can fight our battles. That is what is important to us as Christians. It is a weapon that the Lord has given us that we can use in the name of Jesus. When the enemy strikes, what you must do is go to God in prayer and fire back at the devil using the whole armor of God and the name of Jesus. David used this name when he confronted Goliath. He defeated the giant with the name of the Lord. Pray always. Don't stop praying. Pray is a great key in this Christian journey. Prayer is a great weapon that we can use. You can't stop praying. Don't stop praying. The problem you have will not be a problem as long as you still pray. If anything is taken from you, don't let the name of Jesus be taken from you. A mouth that is too heavy to say, in the name of Jesus, is a mouth from a defeated life. Until that mouth speaks up again and prays in the name of Jesus, there will be no victory. You are more than a conqueror if you pray continually. Trust in the Lord. If you want to have a successful fight, what you must do is trust in the Lord at all times. He knows where to direct you. He knows the things you need to do to win. He has the master plan for you. What you just have to do is trust him and do all he is asking you to do. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The Bible says if we trust the Lord and lean on him only, he will direct our paths. The Holy Spirit is the intel that we have. He has seen the plans of the enemies, and he will come and tell us. But to be able to get this, we must trust the Lord. The Lord is the commander. You can't fight this battle alone. Your strength cannot carry you. If you depend on your strength alone, you will sink. Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. Wherefore let him that thinketh, he standeth. Take heed lest he falls. Are you trusting in the Lord to fight your battles for you? Or are you okay trying to fight alone? You may be thinking how it is possible to fight one's battle alone. If you are not in Christ, you are fighting your battles alone. If you refuse to acknowledge the fact that you can't fight alone, you are fighting alone. If you also do not have faith that your battles will be over, you are not trusting the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6 Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In spiritual warfare, the people involved must be ready to put on armor to shield themselves away from the opponents. Since it is spiritual warfare, it is something of the spirit. Using the physical armor and weapons will not be necessary. If they are not necessary, what then? 
can a man who is at the center of spiritual warfare do? How can he fight? When Goliath was challenging the children of Israel, no one could step forward to fight him. But David came from the bush where he was looking after the flock. He asked what was going on. He needed to understand the concept of the battle before deciding on the approach to win the battle. After he got the information he needed, he decided to fight Goliath. To everyone, it was a terrible and stupid decision. In the same way, it would be a terrible decision for any Christians to fight spiritual warfare using physical weapons. David was given armor to protect himself. The armor wasn't helping. That was not the type of armor that would help him win the battle. The battle was beyond the physical, and so he rejected the armor. In the Old Testament, what David used to fight Goliath was the name of the Lord. Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 then said david to the philistine thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield but i come to thee in the name of the lord of hosts and god of the armies of israel whom thou hast defied in the new testament there was a further explanation and lists of the armor that one must use when fighting a war that is beyond the physical in Ephesians chapter 6. They are things that God himself has made available to the Christians to use to fight the enemy and be victorious. In using these armors, it is important to know that they must be used in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. The armor David used is not the physical one, but the spiritual one that has the name of the Lord all over it. What armor are you using to fight? You must go into battle in the name of the Lord. Expect a fight with the enemy. Like I have said, the fact that you are a Christian doesn't mean Satan will not come to try and fight you. He has no regard for your social status or your position in the church. He doesn't care how often you pray. He doesn't care how rich you are. He doesn't care how spiritual you are. Jesus was spirit-filled. He was upright, but Satan still came to him. If Jesus could be attacked in the form of temptation, you cannot be excluded. Be true to yourself and know that the enemy will always come. This is the number one reason you have to stay in Christ at all times. Peter chapter 5 verse 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. There is something we must be careful of at this stage. After you have understood the fact that the devil will always come to attack, be careful not to attribute everything that happens around you to the attack of the devil. You must know how to discern spiritual attack from just a simple mistake of people around. The reason I am saying this is that many people have sent their loved ones away from them because they feel they are being used by the devil. Truly. The devil may take advantage of things around to use against us so that we will not be able to know it is a spiritual attack. What is important is that you tell God to give you the spirit of discernment. It is very important. Take your position in Christ. Jesus gave a parable of two people who built a house. One built on the sand and the other built on the rock. When the rain came down, the house on the sand collapsed, while the house on the rock stood. Psalm chapter 18 verse 2 The Lord is my rock, and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Jesus is your rock. He is your salvation. When you are in Jesus, no attack will come from the devil will damage your life. Indeed, the fact that you are a Christian doesn't exempt you from the devil's attack. 
But Christ is your shield. He will keep you safe. Being firmly grounded in Jesus and his word will cause you to be unmovable. In Christ, the devil cannot drive you away from Christ once you take a firm position. All you have to do is stay on that rock. Don't go to any other places. There is no safety from the devil elsewhere. The fact that you are in Jesus, you are a child of God. You are of God. We are children of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Don't you see yourself as a castaway? Don't see yourself as what people say you are. If you are in this family of God, how will any spiritual attack overcome you? They will only try but they can never overcome you. The best ally you can form is with Christ. Stand on him and never leave him. When a country fights another country, they make sure they ally with another country so that they become strong. The kind of alliance you form will determine your victory.